All right, music fans, welcome back again to The Real Music Observer. I'm Dave, observing real music in real time for real people. Huh, just like you right there, and just like me, reporting again from sunny southwest Florida, where, again, we're in the 70s today. Very pleasant day. Not a hot day, uh, but not... Um, the locks on the car were really easy to open this morning. That's all I can tell you, folks. Uh, sorry to needle those folks from up north, but uh, I've been getting a lot of stuff over on Twitter uh, <laughs> complaining about the weather. Uh, let me tell you, uh, how angry uh, might Neil Sean be these days? I never thought I'd be doing a video like this six months ago, five months ago. I never thought in a million years. Uh, and this is why when you take a side, as I did, I, I definitely took a side, uh, you might eventually regret it. That's why I, I don't do politics in videos. Uh, I don't try to take sides on purpose. I do observations, and sometimes my observations are wrong, and then I have to go back and rethink it and tell you all what I think. So this is what I think. I think watching Miles Sean play guitar for John Kane at John Kane's church, his wife's church, New Destiny Church the other day, uh, you may say, oh, that's cool. And I, but isn't that weird? Don't these guys have this ongoing sort of battle right now uh, not to kind of change the brand? And John Kane, who I believe has ownership of the name uh, along with Ross Valerie, that's my guess. Again, I can't prove that to you right now. Uh, but those guys are out there, and they've got Miles with them, and this looks like the new version of the band. they got Travis uh, Thibodeau, who has played with Journey as a keyboard player. Uh, the only guy they don't have is Steve Smith, but they've got Muggs playing drums. And by the way, as a side note, I sort of learned, I did learn, let's not say sort of, I learned that both Ross and John were ecstatic when Steve Smith came back to the band. Uh, they called him the orchestra, okay, because, well, Smith is, he is, he's kind of like a one-man band. He does so much back there. But to me, it almost sounded like, hey, you know, this guy, Dean Castronovo, he's a rock drummer, whereas Steve Smith is all finesse and can kind of play all these different sounds, and his technique is day and night from Dean's. Uh, I will make a comment on that. I will just say this. I believe Journey is a rock band, okay? Uh, and you need a rock drummer for a rock band. And it's not a bad thing, by the way, if that rock drummer can sing, all right? I'm not saying I dislike Steve Smith. I understand how great Steve Smith is as a drummer. Uh, when, you know, he's not playing with Journey, he's off playing jazz. I think that's his preferred method. I'm wondering if he even really enjoys playing uh, in the band Journey or if it's just for, you know, a few extra bucks or a, way more than a few. That's, all right, a little side note. I could do a video just on that, but uh, it's in the body of this video. So getting back to Neil, you've got the son, Miles, playing guitar. You've got this church, which... It's, you know, and again, I'm not trying to get political. I'm not trying to get religious here. But this church and this atmosphere and this is not every Journey fan's cup of tea. Okay? You can maybe bring a few along because people are so into Journey that they want to know every little detail, what's happening with which member. I mean, I do a video on Steve Augeri and people are definitely into it. Okay? But uh, I think John Kane is pulling the brand... Uh, toward this type of evangelical Christianity. Okay, I just, I just kind of feel it. Uh, you go on Twitter, and it's nothing about Journey, really. It's always about my solo album, my tour, uh, the church, uh, stuff to do with Christianity, you know, scripture verses, yada, yada, yada. I get it. Your faith is awesome. Nobody's denigrating your faith. But you're the guy with the red whale piano that we remember. Remember the whale? Okay, it's in the Smithsonian now, or it's at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, that's what I saw in 1981 when I went to see Journey. I saw John Kane up there 
playing that bright red piano and Steve Perry running around stage. And by the way, let's throw this in too. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Steve Perry acknowledged one member of Journey above everybody else. Anybody remember? It was Neil Sean. Remember Neil Sean's guitar flying above the city, or however he put it. Uh, one instrument was more, you know, special and important than any other instrument. More or less saying that Neil Sean's guitar playing was as important as anything Steve Perry was doing in the band. Now I would say all these parts make a great whole. Kane can write songs. Uh, he brought some fantastic songs that Neil Sean didn't like that ended up being humongous hits that Perry and Kane said, hey, we're going to do this song. And Neil reluctantly agreed, and then boom, the song becomes like Open Arms, for instance. Huge hit. Uh, so back in the day, there may have been sort of this push and pull, but it wasn't designed to break the band up. It was creative. It was interesting. Now you've got this push and pull, and it seems as though it's designed to pull the band away from one side or the other. And the way I see it today, getting close to the end of 2017, uh, it's designed... I mean, Neil's got to be watching his son playing guitar, and I, I know they had a fight on Twitter or something a few weeks back, but he's got to be going ape bleep. You know what I mean? He's, it's like a holy crap Batman moment. And you say to yourself... Okay, that's maybe like sticking the middle finger in uh, Dad's eye. I get it. You know, you're on this team, and you're, you're free to do whatever you want. You could take that opinion, but is it the right thing to do? I would say pass. You know, my dad, he's going to get, I don't know if that's a good idea. You know, I just, that's the way I would have done it. You know, I'd love to play guitar with you, but I think that's like putting it to dad a little bit too much. And that's after viewing it and thinking about it, that's how I would feel. I would be like, what? Huh? What's he doing? And that's why you see these rants that appear and then they disappear because he's like, you're doing what? I mean, I don't think they should fight about it on Twitter. I think these should be phone calls and so forth. But how is Neil feeling about all of this? And I can see why, even if it's paranoia, why you'd be somewhat paranoid that your band might be going over to this other team, okay? And furthermore, he always is, well, he talked a lot about how in one interview they were actually thinking about touring or leaving uh, and going on without him, Neil Sean. So he, his fears, I think, have been realized here because you look at that band and it's ready to go other than a lead singer. And the question is, is Arnell going to side with uh, Team Kane or is he going to pack it in? Now, if he packs it in, this opens up just all kinds of opportunities. By the way, I think another singer switch, I've come to this conclusion too, uh, if they switch vocalists again or if Arnell flees and they find another new guy, that's it. They can't do this anymore unless an old guy comes back. And that's why the Castronovo thing for the Benefit concert works because we all know who Dean is. He's been in the band. He's sung before. That's fine. But if you bring yet another vocalist in, unless maybe it's... The only guy I can think that might work is Kevin Chalfant because t technically he sang with Journey briefly. And uh, I know he's a Christian. I know he did a Christian album a number of years ago. And he's out there with this journey experience. I don't know how close he is to John Kane, but that's the only guy I can really think of where it might work. By the way, Kevin doesn't sound anything like Steve Perry. He just has a great tenor and he sounds journey-ish, we'll put it that way, but less journey than Arnell, less, way less than Steve Augeri, uh, Jeff Scott Soto. <laughs> Think, I don't think Jeff's going to ever come back to anything that has anything to do with Journey. So, All right, so that's my video. I'm rambling a bit, and I could go on and on about this. But the point is, looking at where Dad is, Neil, uh, I never thought six months ago I'd be doing a video like this and actually feeling a little guilty and a little sorry for the level of enthusiasm I had against Neil and I got sort of on the map because of that but the map the landscape it's changing 
it's changing and uh, 2018 is going to be interesting right now everybody is focused on the benefit concert that Neil Sean is putting on and it's for a really good cause which makes it even better if you've got tickets fantastic I'm hoping a DVD comes out I'm hoping they'll add more dates none have been announced I was told that's a possibility and that this new old band will regroup after the journey tour that uh, ensues and uh, becomes something else I gave him a name idea too so all right that's it I'm Dave this is the real music observer I'll be back again observing more real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me talk to you then